In the early 1960s when the world held its breath during the Cuban Missile Crisis. The United States and the Soviet Union were engaged in a high-stakes standoff, with the threat of nuclear war looming over both superpowers. While most of us are familiar with the presence of Soviet missiles in Cuba, few know about the extensive intelligence network that supported them. Deep in the tropical island nation of Cuba, nestled amidst sugarcane fields and palm trees, the Soviet Union established a massive listening post known by the codename, Lords. The Lords facility was shrouded in secrecy, and its purpose was to intercept and analyze top-secret American communications. Picture a sprawling complex covering over 28 square miles, equipped with gigantic antennas reaching for the sky. This Soviet intelligence behemoth was capable of eavesdropping on a wide range of U.S. military and civilian communications, including phone calls, telex messages, and even satellite transmissions. Its strategic location offered the Soviets an unprecedented advantage in monitoring the American military. But why did the Soviets choose Cuba? Well, it was a combination of factors. Firstly, Cuba's close proximity to the United States made it an ideal location for intercepting American signals. Secondly, Cuba, under Fidel Castro's rule, had developed a strong alliance with the Soviet Union, providing a safe haven for their intelligence operations. Now, let's dive deeper into the life within the Lord's facility. Inside its fortified walls, hundreds of Soviet technicians and intelligence officers worked tirelessly, analyzing intercepted communications day and night. They used cutting-edge technology to decrypt, translate, and gather valuable intelligence for the Soviet military and political leadership. The scale of the operation was mind-boggling. The Lord's facility had more than 1,500 staff members, including linguists, analysts, and technical experts. It resembled a small town, complete with its own power plant, housing facilities, and recreational areas. However, while the Soviet personnel enjoyed a relatively comfortable life within the compound, they were isolated from the vibrant Cuban society just beyond its boundaries. The Cuban people, for the most part, remained unaware of the true nature of the Lord's facility. It operated under a shroud of secrecy, with its location kept hidden from prying eyes. The Soviet Union went to great lengths to maintain its cover, employing elaborate camouflage techniques to disguise the antennas and prevent detection from American surveillance planes. The Lord's facility remained operational for nearly three decades, silently gathering valuable intelligence for the Soviets. However, as the Cold War drew to a close and the Soviet Union started to crumble, the importance of the Cuban listening post diminished. In 2001, facing financial difficulties, Russia finally closed down the Lord's facility, marking the end of an era. Today, all that remains of the once mighty Lord's is a relic of the Cold War, a reminder of the lengths both the United States and the Soviet Union went to, in order to gain an edge in the ongoing struggle for supremacy.